Our next speaker is going to be Tony Costello, who is a professor of architecture here at the college. Tony has uh, done something remarkable in his uh, many years as a professor at the College of Architecture and Planning. Uh, he has traveled throughout the state, the state and his work with uh, numerous communities, bringing the students and the communities together uh, to make some uh, input in terms of what good design and good architecture can do for preservation and preservation planning. And uh, he also created the uh, Muncie Urban Design Studio, which tried to help Muncie and the downtown area in terms of preservation. But I'm going to let Tony explain to you what good design can do for uh, Indiana communities. When I took apart my canned slide uh, presentation on our community-based workshops or what we here at the College of Architecture and Planning do in small communities to um, hopefully customize it for this presentation. Um, I didn't realize that um, uh, its rearrangement, uh, I hope, will add to and reinforce many of the things that Reed has just mentioned. And this morning, although I'm going to talk about a process that we here at the College of Architecture and Planning really uh, believe in, and um, certainly uh, have great faith that it helps a community to become more aware of itself, I would also like to raise some issues that I hope can foster some discussion. And that is uh, Reed's optimism I share, uh, but I also know that if half of this audience was made up of real estate developers and people who owned land on the fringe of many of our communities, I don't think we would have unanimity in the notion that downtown is where all the action should be. And I think as people involved in urban revitalization, historic preservation, I think we need to be aware that one of the real battles is an attempt to really show that historic preservation can be a vehicle for responsible community development. And in that regard, I'm going to really try to focus my remarks and, in a sense, the slides this morning on the importance of the uh, process rather than the product. I could not match the slides that Reed showed, and so I'm glad I decided not to show any before and afters because you've just seen them. And showing you 50 more of the buildings that were covered up and then, wonderfully, they are resurrected and um, uh, truly, once again, show through their brilliance of their original design, I think is not as important as trying to urge or trying to describe, if you will, a process of dealing with good design and community education and community awareness. In some ways, I think good designers when they're involved in community design, have to be much more involved in the notion of human interaction than in design. Namely, the fact that design is an interactive process with a community, and therefore understanding people is as important as understanding the principles of good design. In many ways, designers become facilitators people who can, in a sense, deal with community interaction, deal with issues, deal with controversy. And I think all of you out there involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, preservation movement know that, in fact, controversy simply comes uh, as part of the turf. Uh, and um, just earlier this morning in talking with Reed, obviously uh, Public School 5 in Indianapolis is probably the most current example of the fact that not everybody is in total agreement that preservation is the way to go. And so I think that reinforces the notion that we all have to be involved continuously in the process of education, 
in the process of making a community or helping a community to become even more aware of the richness of its past and its heritage, and that that can become, in turn, a vehicle for a better community in the future. I think with that, if we could have the lights and the slides, I will attempt to talk a little bit about the program and about some of the... We here at the College of Architecture and Planning, in dealing with communities, look at our involvement as one of combining education and a uh, public service. We, of course, at the college here at Ball State, we're the only state-supported College of Architecture and Planning, and therefore we believe that it is our obligation, part of our mission, to in fact serve the, in the entire state of Indiana. What better way to do that than to deal with the revitalization of our urban centers? And uh, as uh, part of this program, as I mentioned, I really believe that what we do in the field as opposed to really teach design, is we really deal with educating a community into an, an awareness and an ability to truly analyze itself and to be critical, to really understand what is positive about that community and, in fact, what is negative about that community. And in looking at a community, we have to deal with the fact of attempting to have a holistic approach to urban revitalization. And although the Main Street program does focus in on the downtown, it has been our experience that a community not only has to address the issues of a revitalized downtown, but of a total revitalized community. So that, in fact, the notion of improving housing stock, of providing better uh, residential areas of uh, hopefully dealing with the idea of a controlled growth becomes very important if a community is going to improve itself. I think if downtown revitalization is seen as simply an involvement on the part of local merchants or the Chamber of Commerce or preservation groups, then I think a great percentage of the population of that community will not, in fact, be totally in favor of what is happening, will not be totally in favor of public funds being committed there, and therefore will not be as supportive of programs that might come out of a Main Street or downtown revitalization uh, program. And in looking at a community, I would hope that as designers and as planners and as preservationists, whether from Ball State University or from Purdue or from the Main Street program, that we begin to try to look at the community in physical terms. Because out of an understanding of a community's physical makeup, we can, in fact, learn and develop clues to what that community was and where that community might be going. But as I mentioned, most importantly, I think a community has to become aware itself that there are problems and that, it, that there is room for improvement. And I think as one of the things that we here at Ball State hold very important is the fact that we do not go into communities unless we are invited. The, the impetus for community revitalization must start with a community. And usually, as Reed mentions, it starts with a small group of people. One of the real, I think, tasks for us when we go in and work with the community is to try to um, expand the base of community involvement, to get people who are coming at community revitalization from a wide range of perspectives to join together and to realize that the preservationists do have a lot in common, in fact, with people who are looking at improving, for instance, recreational opportunities. That preservationists do have things in common with people who are concerned about better residential neighborhoods. 
because in fact what we're all about in the final analysis is attempting to improve a community holistically. That community being a better place to live, to worship, to educate, to enjoy the finer things of life. And therefore, one of the real hallmarks of our involvement, and as Reed showed, the involvement of Historic Landmarks Foundation and of the Main Street program, is the notion of an interactive design process. That in which the community literally takes part in determining their own future. Many of you in this room I am sure remember the old 701 comprehensive plan programs that came out of Washington in the 50s and 60s and 70s, in which for the most part planning was done in, a, in, an, in an isolated manner truly from the community. And community interaction and participation was really the two public hearings that were mandated by the legislation. And we know, in fact, that one has to almost search in a community to find the last remaining copy of that 701 comprehensive plan. And in most cases, we find it in the rare book section of the local library, gathering dust never to truly be used to guide that community in its future. Because the people did not have a part in determining the future or the planning strategies in that particular uh, program. And as one can see here, and as Reed has shown, the notion of inviting participation and structuring participation is one of the things that we at the college demand of our uh, interaction with the community. It is something that, upon initially going into a community, we try to sense. Simply, where is that community at with the idea of public participation in the process? Public 